to meet you, everyone. Uh, Michael Velt, as you said, Bob, uh, VP Marketing of Plummy. Plummy is a casual game division by uh, Playtech. Playtech is uh, number one listed uh, in London for online software gambling, um, B2B, and we joined, we built what a company called Playme. Playme is built out of three, 200, 220 developers today, 240 developers, a bit. And we released four games a year. We released a game called Cake Story um, in the beginning of February, which is only on Canvas. And today we're pushing very strong a game called Army of Heroes, which is a combat strategy game that in the meantime you can find it on Android and the next month you can find it on iOS. Uh, I'll be speaking about, as Bob said, broken business model in mobile games as the prices are going skyrocketing high and everyone wants to be successful, so how do we make that happen? So if we take what happened from the beginning of time, so what I call the APRA success started with casual games, wasn't so much into what happens today with all the monetization success. So 2009, Angry Birds um, grew, everybody knows the story. 2010 came Cut the Rope, Zepto Lab doing more or less not free to play games, but more freemium or premium to $199 and made a huge success. Then when Temple Run and Subway Surfer, which started a little bit the monetization success, uh, then came the monetization success with Empire Kingdom, the first real combat game that I think that came out that really did a, a little bit of a change. Then came Clash of Clans 2012, a little bit into the casual game in Candy Crush, and then Castle Clash, which I think it's killing it. Um, and then it's become, uh, I think since then it's become a real new industry. And that's when prices really started rocketing up. Suddenly, see supersonic t-shirts there, so suddenly it's... Instant prices have been up and everything's going up and we, need to we still need to be successful. So how do we do that? Uh, in 2015, it's become very, very hard to enter the market. Uh, what happened is that we have m over one and a half million apps. The aggressive competition, everybody knows what Alex is doing. Everybody knows what Clash of Clans are doing. TV ads are coming like the new big thing. UA costs under $3. You can't really get any quality. And as before, the guy that was here before was saying that eight out of 10 of the top 10 grossing are still in the same position for the last three, four years, so two years, sorry. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem and that's, as I see it, as a little bit of a broken business model. Um, when LTVs are not $3 and CPIs are $3, so how can we succeed? <coughs> so what happens also that lower organic rates have become much, much lower. Maybe you can do ASO and stuff like that, but organic rates are not as Temple Run has been or Subway Surfer. Subway Surfer just announced over 1 billion downloads. So that doesn't exist anymore. Even when Angry Birds 2 now had a huge, huge, huge organic rate growth, they got to 50 million downloads and stopped there. So the same numbers don't, don't occur. As we have a high saturation, the LTV goes down. People uh, don't... On loyalty has gone really, really, really down. And, and an acquisition, you cannot be positive on ROI, disregarding what anyone will tell you. you it's impossible. So how do we win? So we need to be, have our effective CPI being lower than our lifetime value. But as we saw, lower organic rates is not helping the eCPI, and lower LTVs is not helping the LTV. So what do we do? ECPI is growing, LTV is decreasing. That seems, I would say that's a broken business model, um, but we can overcome, we just need to be agile, we need to be aggressive, and we need to be smart. So what do we do? There's three th th things that we can do to help the, the business model, bro the broken business model. So what we do is we can decrease our CPI bit, which I'll elaborate. We can decrease our ECPI, and we increase our LTV. So decreasing the CPI, I would not advise anyone. I don't think that's a good idea. It doesn't work with ad networks. Uh, it first of all, it decreases quality. Second of all, it decreases your chances to scale. You can't really do anything massive if you decrease your CPI. And you start getting the less better tier groups of traffic, which doesn't really, really help. Uh, and it decreases your lifetime value because you don't get the good users that you're speaking about. Uh, so what can we do? We can decrease our eCPI, which is, that's where we start pushing and thinking a bit different. So what we do is we work very, very hard on organic, 
We work very, very hard on platform partnerships, and we can work very, very hard on opening as much stores as possible. Why? So on the organic side, we want to do three different things. We, how do we succeed the organic? First of all, the ASO. There's been a whole speech, a few speeches about ASO. There's endless amount of tools. We specifically use Sensor Tower. What we do is we look for the traffic, uh, like the how hard is it to enter, how hard is it to think. There's a whole lectures that can be talked about, like the ASO. Um, but in the end, it's test optimized, test optimized, test optimized, test optimized. That's all you can do. Uh, on Google, it's especially your description and your title. On iOS, it's more your keywords. Um, but I suggest use your sensor tower and just, if you can, put a person on that just to do that. And if you can't, don't go to sleep. Um, In-game in viral loop, which means that you should build before you start marketing, already understand what is the viral loop that you're going to do in order to increase your organic. Because organic, as I said, is the key to success. So let's say in Pirate Kings, the game, I don't know who ever knows or doesn't know, what you do is you are end of it, your energy goes out and then you need to invite your friends. That is the best thing that works. Doesn't work on all games, it needs to be a very, very quick and agile kind of viral loop, but it doesn't, you can't copy it like in Candy Crush, whoever tried to copy the invite system on the ad, like the stop, when, when they stop you, you uh, what, don't, don't remember the name, but... Invite your friends in order to proceed. It worked in Candy Crush. Since people trying to copy it, it doesn't work. So you need to be kind of creative, kind of be on that side, but understand before you build the game, like before you market the game, understand like what is the in-game variable that I need to do in order to increase my organic before I even think about marketing. So that's a little bit into the product marketing. Um, another thing is word to mouth. I don't believe in boost, uh, burst campaigns. I believe that burst campaigns should come through the, sorry, your, your top position needs to be from the word to mouth, not from charge to mouth, if that's understood. Um, so you need to think about how, you make, how do you make a buzz? How do you make something um, be out of this world so people will talk about it? Why are you different than one and a half other million apps? Uh, think about it, understand, try and go down deep into the, what makes people talk about stuff. In specifically games, it, a lot of integration, multiplayer works very, very good on that. Make people speak to each other and make that your organic grow as much as possible. Platform partnerships, be creative. So first of all, create unique products. Uh, Google and Apple are always looking for unique products. They're always looking for products that will be not the next Boom Beach, not the next Candy Crush, but something unique. The second that you bring a unique product, feature will come, and the platform will actually work with you together in order to build a strategy. So you work from the beginning, from the product, hey, listen, we have one, two, three, four, this is our strategy, this is what we want to be, let's work together, and how can we create that, and how can we make that happen? Be original, it's very much to think about it. It's like app stores are getting endless amount of people talking to them and saying to them, listen, we have this and this and this, this and this and this, et cetera, et cetera. Be original, stand out, try and be unique, try and be one of a kind that why would they listen to you and not to another 10,000, 20,000 developers? Just imagine they have a lot of people on their mind. Uh, be goal focused and open minded, build a strategy with them from the beginning, build a partnership and don't just ask to be featured, 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 but be more focused. I want to enter Turkey, I want to enter Mexico, I want to enter this specific country, I want to understand this specific solution and this is where I want to grow and understand from them when they will give you back your feedbacks, understand from them what they want you to change and try and work with them together because they are looking for the platform to, to work together. So let's say for Facebook, Facebook really like you to understand how your icon can change. Try and understand how other stuff work in the platform in order for you to grow and build a strong partnership together. New stores. So iOS and Google Play are one and a half million uh, Apps, yeah, am I right? Um, there's Amazon, Windows Store, We Play. We spoke about <laughs> so much. Um, there's endless amount of stores with less saturation. In the end, we want to reach organic. How do we reach organic? We have to find other ways to 
increase our organic and free installs. With new stores, we can do that. We can create that. They look for content. They build it for new content. They want more games to come into them, and they're much easier to get, to be accessed and to be, you know, to be unique also in their platform. First of all, it's not that saturated. First of all, you can expand. Second of all, you can expand your content as much as possible. So if you now on iOS and Google, and suddenly you're on Amazon, Windows, WePlay, um, PlayPhone, Carrier Billing, uh, endless amount of pla places that you can be. It's much easier to reach out to your users. It's much easier. You, you, you expand your reach to places that never end this, and your organic grows, and then your eCPI decreases. And in the end, we're winning. That's how we're making the success. Increasing LTV. So if we were speaking about before of organic, now we have platform partnerships and new stores. We have the, oh, sorry, I'm talking about here. So if we're here, so CPI decreasing is not working. Decreasing eCPI, we spoke about and increasing LTV. <coughs> Retention optimization, making decisions by data and ad rewards, uh, video ad rewards, which I think it's the only rewards, the only ads that you should be in your app. So retention. Retention, first of all, focus only on day one, only on day seven and day 28. These are the keys, especially if you don't have a retention team, that that's all the, what they do. But these are the key numbers that you need to focus on. Understand where your users churn and ongoing updates in order to bring back your users and tell them about new stuff. Data, database decisions. So we specifically A-B test everything. There's not one decision that we make that we don't A-B test. If it's an icon, if it's screenshots, if it's what we speak, if it's our description, everything we test. Through the test, we understand how, be, how users behavior. And then we, through that, we understand how we can segment our users accordingly, and then how can we return them as we spoke before. So a little example. This is our Google Play uh, list. So we wanted to understand what, how can we increase people that come because we got a feature. We need people to download the app and not just look at it. So what we did is we had a version that, uh, as you can see, audience 50%, and then we split the 30%, three different screens to see what performance and look at the results how ac how you can actually see so what we did is we first of all we had a Ghana and then we had the three dollar value gift that increased our uh, conversion as you can see like it uses its money every user here is another three dollars think about it like that ads so what can we do in ads there's all interstitials banners etc 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 I think people today, part of the users must understand or m think about it as a gender that they don't want to pay. Okay, so what do we do? We want them to stay in the game, but they don't want to pay. So what we do is we do rewarded videos. I think that they need to be as native as possible. Um, a good uh, solution for that is Fiber, which do a mediation, and then you can optimize through all your channels, oh sorry, also supersonic do mediation. Um, so what you can do is um, you build a unit in your app, you understand how native that is, try and build a unit that's very, very native so the user can speak. We spoke about it today that there's a few other games that are like building lights and sometimes the lights are coming up. We did a, a boat that comes out and in every time there's a rewarded vo uh, video because depends on the frequency and depends on how you want to build it. Uh, and then you optimize through the mediation, you understand which channels are working. So are chart boost are the best, are Unity ads are the best, are Fiber or anyone else that is working. Uplavin are a very, very good company as well. So what you do is try to understand all the time which channel is working for you best, where's the biggest fill rate, where's the most, what's happening, and where can we make the most, highest eCPM. If that's really, really hard and that does need resources, uh, we are 4,000 people company, uh, so it's a little bit easier, and 300 people in Plummy, so that's a little bit easier to build teams for attention, monetization, etc. I believe that indie developers can also just do one little solution, which is third-party publishing. The third-party publishing does three things for you. First of all, it focuses on live operations, which can increase everything we spoke about. They can also do the platform partnerships. They can also do the new stores, etc., etc. They give you marketing budgets, which is not everybody has today. Uh, most of the people don't have today, and especially like the capital in the beginning in order to grow. 
and it helps the indie developers to focus on what they're good at. They don't need to think about growth, they think about how the game is good, how can we increase monetization, how can we increase engagement. So it's not easy, but it's rewarding, and it's super possible. Thank you. Well, uh, two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, uh, why do you believe uh, CPI uh, uh, got higher uh, recently, in the recent years? And the second one is, uh, in which cases do you believe CPI is still worth the investment, uh, still has a positive ROI? So I'll answer the first question. CPI, as I've spoken about in the beginning, competition has become very, very aggressive, and more games that can monetize, that make money with capital, have entered the market. So Castle Clash, Clash of Clans, Machine Zone, um, even SGN that did casual, that monetized very well through a cross promo on one LTV. These companies just become so aggressive, and the supply was, in the, at least two, two years ago, one year, the supply is growing a little bit, but supply is low. So that's what's creating actually the high prices because the demand is getting very, very aggressive and the supply is getting very, very, like it's, it's growing, but it's not growing in the same, you know, like one and a half million <laughs> apps that are coming up and like so many, like there's at least 100 top grossing apps today in the US that are spending very, very aggressively. So that's, I think, what created the high CPIs, if that's what your question was. Uh, well, yeah, it's connected to the other question because uh, if they spent very aggressively, what, what is the reason for that? Because you explained that it, yes. that it, it has so, a negative ROI, probably. So first of all, um, we do not look when we buy on CPI, we do not look for 100% on the acquisition. So we're looking for X amount, which of course not disclosed, but we're looking for an X amount of return on our acquisition, okay? So, but if we calculate that, and as I said, organic, if we, we need to reach our eCPI. So we're looking to actually be profitable on our eCPI. So my end goal is all the time eCPI, not my CPI. So what I sometimes, let's say you have a feature, buy as much as possible, buy for $10 CPI, buy for $15 CPI, even if your EC, all the time that your eCPI is low, so you're winning, you're successful. Of course, you need the margin for all operations and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm saying all the time that your organic is growing and everything's growing and everything's doing well, so CPI is not the problem. But the eCPI is what you need to focus on. So, so you believe that paid installations uh, drive extra organic installations? Paid installations is part of the whole picture. Mm -hmm. It's not the only way to succeed. It's just a part of the whole 360 solution. So if you would look at the 360 solution, so you would say it's paid acquisition is one, PR is two, platform partnership is three, or increasing organic is four, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you need in order to look at the full picture. So as, as I spoke today with uh, Pep, we look at it as a product. We don't look, we look at it as a B2C product and not as I pay $3, I want $4 back. But this is the product, this is the marketing, I want it to reach a market share of 2%. How do I do a 2%? And part of that is CPI acquisition, but not CPI in front of LTV. Does that make sense? Thank you. I actually have a question yes. myself. So I, I work with a lot of indies that don't have a huge budget, but I do see if they are going for these partnerships and they're, they're going for app stores or new technologies, whenever there's a new technology that comes out or there's a new app store that comes out, they're very focused at trying to get that feature or trying to be featured because of that new technology. A watch comes out, they, okay, okay, I gotta change what I'm doing here to put something on a watch because it's brand new. Or this TV is now available. Okay, I'm gonna put my app out there for the TV now. Do you, is, it sounds like that's a way to create that. Be unique. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Apple, I know every time we send Apple, please feature us, they send us, have you adopted our Apple Watch? Or have you adopted our App TV? Or have you adopted anything right. new? So that is a re part of the thing that I said. Be, be unique and stand out. So yes, try and stand out through different technologies that Apple, and try and right. fit, as I said, be open-minded, to so try and fit yourself into their strategy yeah. instead of they fit you into your strategy and try to work together. So I look at it as not platform featuring, I look at it as a platform partnership. Right, and you also so said I, be pointed about what you're asking for. You're not just saying, hey, I want to be featured. Exactly. You're saying, hey, I want to get into this region. Exactly. Or I want to get onto this component of your SDK of being onto your TV technology or, or something exactly. like that. So try, and, try, and, try and build a partnership instead of trying to get stuff out of them. And look, it's, it's a way of looking at it. It's, a, I think, the mindset of trying, 
build a partnership, don't build on a one-time feature. And thinking through uh, adopting technologies is one of the ways of thinking of how can we build the partnership. So yes, I agree that that is a good solution of also being unique and also looking at it as building a partnership. Well, Michael, thank you very much for the talk. Thank you very much. much appreciated.